Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss the rental of vacation homes. When you have a second home either on a beach, in the mountains, or in your favorite city, and sometimes what you do, you might rent that home as a source of income when you are not there. So what is the treatment of that rental income if you do have that second home? Well, we have to understand a vacation home may have three different classification, which are primarily personal use residence, primarily rental use residence, and personal slash rental use residence, which is a hybrid category. So the first thing before you determine how to treat the income and the expenses from your vacation home, you have to understand what does it qualify under? Is it a primary use, personal, primarily rental, or is it a hybrid personal slash rental use residence? Starting with primary personal use residence, which is the easiest category, and let's go ahead and discuss this. When is the vacation home considered a primarily personal use residence? Is a residence that's rented for less than 15 days during the tax year? Then it's a primarily personal use residence. So you do have that second vacation home. However, you rented it for less than 15 days. If you rented it less than 15 days, guess what? It's water under the bridge. The taxpayer is not required to report any income from the rent of personal use residence. Also, you have to understand, you also cannot deduct any expenses associated with the residence. Of course, except for qualified mortgage interest and real estate taxes, but those, they go on your itemized deduction on Schedule A. That's different. So you have to understand if it's a primarily personal use, nothing to worry about. Let's take a look at an example. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's gonna help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles, my accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses, broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. Garcia owns a beach house. During the current tax year, she rented it to an unrelated party for 10 days for $2,300. The house was vacant for the remainder of the year. Garcia incurred the following expenses in relation to the house. Utilities, maintenance, depreciation, property taxes, mortgage interest of 300. For income tax purposes, determine the appropriate treatment of the income and the expenses. Well, given that Garcia rented the house for 10 days only, well, it's less than 15 days, we consider this as a personal use property. Therefore, Garcia is not required to report the income Regarding the expenses, she's allowed to deduct the property taxes and mortgage interest, which is total of 1500 on her Schedule A. Let's take a look when the property is a primarily rental use property. When is it a primarily rental use? Well, when it's rented for more than 15 days, also not used for personal purpose for more than the greater of. So it has to be more than 15 days. And when it comes to personal use, you did not use it more than 14, the greater of 14 days or 10% of the total rental days when it's treated as a rental use property. So for example, if you rented it 200 days times 10%, that's 20 days. So now, you did not use it the greater of 14 or 20 days. You would look at 20 days, so you cannot use it more than 20 days for personal use. Now, a taxpayer is required to report any income earned from the rent of the rent of this rental property. In addition, he or she may deduct the expenses associated with the rental use of the property. Well, what we have here is a rental property, technically. For rental use property, a taxpayer is allowed to report a net loss from the rental activity. So if you do have a loss, you can report that net loss. Now it's worth noting or mentioning, following the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017, the mortgage interest on this type of property is no longer deductible as itemized deduction because the property does not qualify as a personal residence. To illustrate, let's take a look at this example going back to Garcia. 
Garcia rented her beach house for, unre for an unrelated party for 40 days for 5,200 and personally used it for 10 days. Now, in the first example, I told you Garcia has a beach house and she rented it for 10 days. You could also rent your own home for 10 days. It doesn't have to be a second house and it will be also a personal residence. Now, we rented it more than 15 days. So notice it's no longer considered a personal residence. And Garcia incurred the following expenses. Utilities of 1,200, maintenance of 700, depreciation of 1,000, property taxes of 1,700, and mortgage interest of 2,560. Let's determine the appropriate treatment for the income and the expenses under this scenario. Well, the first thing is, it's no longer a primarily residence home here. Why? Because we rented it more than 15 days. Also, it was used for personal purpose for 10 days. Now, which is less than the greater of 14 days or 10% of rental days. The rental days were 40 days times 10%. That's equal to four days. Well, so 10 days, the personal use, 10 days is less than the greater of 14 and Four. The greater is 14. It's less than 14. Therefore, this property is classified as rental use property. Rental use property means, just simply put, we have a Schedule E and we fill out our income and expenses there. Let's take a look at what we do for this example, the numbers that we need to compute as expense related to the rental property. If you want to copy the numbers down, the expenses, we're going to go to the second slide. Well, income is the same personal uh, rental or personal it doesn't matter the income is reported for 5200 now what do we have to do with with utilities remember we have utilities of let's see utilities were total of 1200 the total was 1200 now we are going to prorate the utilities we're going to give 10 percent uh, 20 percent how did we come up with 20 percent 10 days divided by 50 where's the 50 coming from 10 personal 40 rental we have 50 days and the rental portion 40 divided by 50 which is 80 percent so we're going to prorate the utilities 20 percent personal 80 percent business same thing with maintenance which is 700 dollar in total 20 percent depreciation was a thousand property taxes let's see 1360 plus 340 that's 1700 and mortgage interest the same thing we're going to prorate them prorate them 20 and a 20 and 80 percent now the income is 5200 the total deductible expenses for this business adding up all the expenses is 5728 all in all we have a loss of 528 and this loss is deductible for AGI assuming the at risk and passive activity loss are satisfied so you can deduct this income against other income assuming we satisfy this at risk rule which we'll talk we'll talk about in a separate recording in addition what's going to happen with Garcia the $340 of property taxes that it was considered personal this will go on her schedule a and she'll be able to deduct this the mortgage interest as well as other expenses associated with the personal use which are let me just show you what's going to happen to these expenses this 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 too bad those you cannot use basically she lost them it's personal use and it's not deductible now let's take a look at personal slash rental use property so this one is not primary residence it's not primary rental we have a rental place and it's hybrid. When do we consider a place as a hybrid? Well, first, the place has to be rented more than 15 days and used, and used, notice here, not used, and used for personal purposes for the greater of, again, 14 days or 10% of the total rental days as it's treated as, pers as, as personal slash rental use property. So rather than not used, now it's used for the for the greater of these two so let's take a look at we'll look we'll look at an example in this case of a personal slash rental use property the taxpayer is required to report the income from the rental property so the income that's not an issue we have to report the income however the expenses must be allocated between the personal and rental use on a pro rata basis 
The expenses related to the rental use property are allowed as a deduction to the extent of rental income. So the expenses, we can deduct them. They have to be first prorated, then we can deduct them. But here's the thing. We can deduct them to the extent of rental income. What does that mean? It means the expenses cannot be more than income. So in other words, no loss is allowed. The rental activity may not result in a loss. So the best a scenario is for tax purposes, we would have, we break even zero. So we have 10,000 of income. We can only deduct 10,000 of expenses, although we have more than 10,000 prorated to that business, to that rental. We can't. It's up to zero. It's like a hobby loss, a hobby activity. You cannot create a net loss. Additionally, the expenses deducted, they have to follow an order. First, we deduct the real estate taxes, then and the mortgage interest, which are deductible in all cases. Here, all cases means on Schedule A. Then we would look at operating expenses such as utility, maintenance, insurance, and depreciation. Now, for personal slash rental use property, which is the hybrid, the mortgage interest and the real estate associated with that are can be allowed as itemized deductions. So that's why we start with them. We start deducting them first. That's why we deduct them first because if they are not if they are not deducted for rental, they are deducted on Schedule A. Let's take a look at an example to illustrate this concept. Again, going back to Garcia. Now she rented her house to an unrelated party for 45 days. So it's more than 15. It's it's not it's no longer primary residence. And personally used it for 15 days. Well, let's look at the expenses that she incurred. Utilities of 1700, maintenance 900, depreciation 1200, property taxes 1200, and mortgage interest of 2760. How do we treat those incomes and expenses? Well, let's take a look at it. First, Garcia's home was rented for 45 days, which is more than 15. More than 15 means no longer a primary residence. Additionally, it was used for personal purpose for 15 days, which is what? The greater, greater than 14 days or 10% of rental period. 45 days times 10%, 4.5. Well, 15 days is greater than 14 days. So now what we have is we have a hybrid. Therefore, the beach house in this situation classify as a hybrid personal slash rental use property. Now, how do we allocate the expenses? Because the income has to be reported fully. Well, we are going to have the denominator for the ratio is 60 days, which is 45 rental plus 15 personal, 60 days. So personal is 15 over 60, which is 25%. The rental is 45 over 60, which is 75%. The income is all goes toward the rental. Then the mortgage is allocated 75 to 25. Property taxes, same concept, utilities, maintenance, and depreciation. Now, if we add up all the expenses, and let's go ahead and add up all the expenses that we computed here. So if we take 20, 70 plus 14, 25 plus 20, 75 plus 675 plus 900, if we add up all the expenses, all the expenses will add up to be, if my math is right, 6,345. Well, if that's the case, if this is our expenses and we generated income of 6,200, we should have a loss. Well, we cannot. We are limited in terms of, in terms of, let me go ahead and add up all the expenses first that we prorated. So 2,070 plus 1425 plus 1275 plus 675 plus 900. If we add up all the expenses, it's going to be 6,345. The expenses that we are prorated to the rental property based on a 75% ratio. Well, guess what? We cannot take all the deductions. Why not? Because we are limited to 6,200 in deductions. So what's going to happen is this. We can only take from depreciation. We're going to go to the depreciation and we are only, deduction is limited to 755. Why 755? Because if we take 755 plus the, all the other expenses will give us exactly 6,200. Remember, this is a hybrid situation. Therefore, we cannot report a loss. It has to be zero. Now what's going to happen, the depreciation, it will be carried over. For the personal personal portion, well, we have the mortgage and the property taxes. Those will be reported on Schedule A. Utilities, maintenance, and depreciation. Well, depreciation, the personal portion is not allowed. Basically, they're going to be not simply put 
not used, simply put not used. So let's uh, review. As a result, this is a hybrid, no gain and no loss. For Garcia, although she has 6345, she can only deduct 6200. In fact, the deduction of depreciation is limited to 755 and the remaining depreciation carried forward to future years. It's also important that the basis of the depreciation is reduced by 755. The basis of the property, because it's depreciated, so when you sell it later, the, it's, it's, it's a reduction. Because remember, when you take depreciation, it reduces your basis, well, which we'll talk about that later in a separate, re, separate session when we talk about depreciation and cost recovery. In addition, Garcia is allowed to deduct 1,165, which are the, the sum of the taxes on the property and the mortgage interest associated. Now let's discuss a topic about the allocation of expenses because the IRS will have a different role than the courts. This is beyond the scope of a CPA exam. I'm not sure if it's gonna be covered for the CPA exam in the future, but nevertheless, I think for a student or for an enrolled agent, this is relevant. The allocation of real estate taxes and mortgage interest, those two, between rental and personal use property differ from the court and the IRS. So how you would be able to, how much to deduct, depending because it's a hybrid. In other words, what's the denominator that we're gonna be using? Is it gonna be the amount, the days rented, or is it gonna be the, the total days in a year? The court, as per court, real estate taxes and mortgage, which accrue readily over the tax year should be allocated between the personal and rental basis on 365 or 366 if we have a leap year. So based on the number of days in a year. The IRS allocation, which what I basically what I used, the real estate taxes and the mortgage interest should be allocated between the personal and rental based on the total number of days in which the property was used. The other type of expenses, such as utilities, maintenance, and depreciation, are allocated based on the total number of days in which the property was used. So when it comes to the other expenses, it's how much the property are used, either court or IRS. However, when it comes to mortgage and interest, this is where they differ. So let's take a look at an example to see how this, what, what, what difference does it make, okay? John owns a house in the Poconos during the current year. He rented it for 45 days, 8,200 in income. The home is qualified as a hybrid, personal slash rental. John also used it for personal use for 30 days. The, to the real estate taxes and the mortgage interest associated with the house were 6,200 and 3,400 respectively. In addition, John incurred maintenance of 1,200, utilities of 2,500, and depreciation expense of 3,500. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna determine the total deductible expenses associated with the rental use under the IRA and under the court approach. So we're gonna look at both side by side and look at the numbers. Now, if you don't have the PowerPoint slides, if you're not a Farhat member, just copy or take a picture of the slide so you can see where the numbers are coming from. Now, whether we used the IRS or the court approach, the income will always be the same under both. So we, it doesn't have to worry about income. When it comes to the IRS approach, how do we prorate we prorate based on the number of rental days. Well, what does that mean? It's the denominator is 75 days. Why 75 days? It's the rental, which is 45, plus the personal 30, we would use 75 days. Therefore, if we use 75 days, 45 divided by 75, the rental days divided by 75, the rental is 60%. So for the mortgage, we're gonna take 60% of the mortgage interest deducted. We're gonna take 60% of the property taxes. And for the other expenses, it's gonna be 60, always 60%. Now, when it comes to the, I, the court approach, under the court approach, here's what's gonna happen. For the mortgage interest, we are gonna take 3,400, we're gonna take 45 days, and we're gonna be using a different denominator, and the de denominator is 365 for mortgage interest. Also, for property taxes, we're only gonna be taking 764 for mortgage interest. Then, when it comes to utilities, it doesn't really make a difference. It's gonna be based on 75. So notice, the only difference it makes it when it comes to mortgage and taxes, and the answer is why. Well, we're gonna see why in a moment. What, what difference does it make to the taxpayer, whether they use the court approach or they use the IRS approach? Now, here's what's gonna happen. Since, since this is a hybrid, we can only have, we can only have, maximum we can have zero income. 
Maximum means you cannot have a loss. You can have a zero income. So your expenses cannot exceed your expenses cannot exceed eight thousand two hundred. So when we add up all our expenses, we are still short of two thousand two hundred from the balance. So what you do is you use the depreciation last, and you would say, okay, my depreciation in total is one thousand nine hundred and twenty. I'm limited to two twenty. Therefore, if I take only two twenty of depreciation. 220 of depreciation and add up all the expenses based on the IRS approach. I have 8,200 of income. 8,200 of income will give me a loss of zero. That's fine. Let's take a look at the court approach. Under the court approach, my mortgage interest is 419, my property is 764, my utilities 1500, my maintenance is 720. Therefore, I can still deduct. 4,796. Therefore, I'm going to take my full depreciation, which is 1,920. And after all said and done, I have expenses of 5,324. Well, which is going to give me a net income, a net income of 2,876. You're going to say, I don't like the net income because I have to pay taxes on this net income. Well, yes, you would prefer to have a loss rather than a net income, unless Unless what's going to happen is this, unless you can take, you can benefit from the amount of interest and taxes that you're going to be able to take on Schedule A. So you have to determine, can I benefit from my interest and taxes I take on Schedule A versus paying my taxes? So you have to make that decision. So that's why it's different. So if, simply put, let's, let, let me simplify it for you. If you don't itemize, if you don't itemize, you want the IRS approach because you want to take as much as possible in your deduction and have a zero, go go ahead and break even. Now, if you itemize, you have to determine what's the effect of my itemized deduction versus the additional taxes I have to pay on this income. So for each individual, it will be different. And if I have to guess, most likely the future CPA exam, they will have, they might have a problems like this as part of the tax planning. My guess, just a speculation from my end. Under the IRS approach, the mortgage interest and the real estate are allocated based on the days of use, which is 75 days, 45 plus 30. The court allocate based on the number of years. The remaining real estate taxes and the mortgage, which are not deducted in arriving at AGI, are allowed as itemized deduction on Schedule A. So you have to know if it's worth it for you, those itemized deductions. For example, under the IRS, IRS, not IRA, you have 3840. Under the court approach, you have 8,416. You have to determine the effect of the taxes on taking these into account because the amount of taxes could be different, could be way larger under certain circumstances. So that's the key. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs, true false exercises, additional lectures. That's going to help you understand this topic better. Rental income, Rental income, taxes of rental income, vacation of vacation rental income is important. It's an important topic on the CPA exam. Good luck. Study hard. I'm always here for you and stay safe.